What's up guys, Steve here. I hope you haven't been enjoying all the videos, the vlogs, everything going through, whatever, going through all the cards and everything. I mean, it was an absolute blast going to Japan. I don't know whether this video is going to be out by the time all the vlogs are over or whether I'm going to put it out tonight even. So we have a lot on our plate. Let me just uh, show you real quick, turn this light on. If I press uh, this button, it uh, <laughs> shows all the cards that we have to deal with today. And there's a lot. And if you don't think this is much, I'm just going to pick up this stack and just show you the side. So there's about... 15, 20, 20, oh my, there's so many, there is so many stacks here, and we have to sort these cards out, so before we start, I want to show you something, I'm about to eat this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat this, oh, I used the wrong camera, no, I needed to go back to here, I'm not very good at this, oh no, we got to redo this video, it kind of messed up my jam on the other one, but right here, I have Donut Long John with Fresh Cream and Jam, two pack, so we're going to do a little bit of a, a donut unboxing, really, I'm pretty sure I can... Yeah, that's really good but you see this one here is really good you know the jam goes down the middle and this one i don't know what they were going on i think i had it in the bag carrying it home and it slid off a little bit which is kind of sad but it's not really my fault that that's the bakery's fault well i didn't actually get this from a bakery i got this from woolworths which is a supermarket here but it says woolworths bakery it has its own bakery section so no one cares let's get to sorting the cards but before i saw it I'm really hungry, and I'm going to eat these, but I just wanted to show the boys the donuts. Now, this isn't a jam donut, which I would normally typically say is a jam donut. This is just like a long donut. It has cream, and it's long. Jam donuts, to me, are round, and they have jam inside. Not relevant, and I don't know why I'm talking about this, but let's sort some cards. All right, let's get into it. All right, I just want to put in a disclaimer. Before I touch any card, every card here is either played or damaged condition. There might be very, very few that are in near mint condition, near mint condition. Let me put it up here, near mint condition, whatever. But I will just say 95% of these cards are played or damaged. They were bought as played or damaged cards. That's why they're all unsleeved sitting here. Some of these cards are a little bit more expensive than others. Just please note that like, let me just show this Pikachu off. Crease on the left-hand side. It's all played and or damaged cards. So having them unsleeved. It doesn't actually damage them anymore, and I'm not going to be throwing them around like crazy. But before everyone goes like, oh my god, you're damaging all those cards. These cards are already that. I've condition checked them all to already be the played and damaged cards I have to deal with. I spread them out on this table just so people have an idea of what we're looking at as well. So what I'm doing today is... Geez, I'm like a few minutes in, I haven't even said anything. What I'm doing today is I'm putting them into type or just color for those people that don't know Pokemon, I am uh, putting all the yellow cards with the yellow cards, all the blue cards with the blue cards, etc, etc. This is uh, pretty much the first part of my sorting when, when I get cards in. So I either do condition first, or and then I do type, or color, however you want to know, or however you want to say it. I do condition and then type, or I just do straight up just type, and then I do the conditions within the type. It depends on the set, it depends how many cards. But this is some of the more simple ways that I have uh, figured things out. And I'm also going to be sorting through a few cards. There are some cards in here that probably shouldn't be on my, like, two list priority. Because I don't even know what's going on here. Like, look, what is, what is this? Like on Crystal Charizard, some Zapdos plays, Lugia. Yeah, I, I don't... Another three Lugia EX. Like, this is... And before anyone asks, like, Steve, where did you get that... This is like eight months of purchases <laughs> just from everywhere. A lot of this is also from my trip to Japan as well. So I can't just be like, oh yeah, just go to Japan and buy it. But that's it. And if another person's asked, like, where can I buy these from you? Uh, these will be all listed for sale. Bloody cats getting hair everywhere all the time. These will all be listed for sale. Sorry about that. Having some technical uh, difficulties. So what was I saying? Yeah, all these uh, will all be listed for sale on my eBay account eventually. <laughs> on my uh, Kimmy's Cards email, email, uh, e email, eBay account. So that's what I'll be doing. This is a dark type. So what I'm just going to be doing here is just slowly sorting them. Slowly but surely sorting these cards, talking about them. I might pick out some certain cards. I might talk about some stuff. I think all the stuff that's pretty fresh in my mind at the moment is Japan. Like, let me put Dark and Steel type over here, because don't get many of those. Fire, Water is really common. Normal Psychic, uh, Electric, a little bit common. You know, the EX Battle vs. Charizard, a great looking card. Um, is that fine, the zoom? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, most people put these 
in the background, right? Uh, let me know. Do you guys actually, like, how many people out there actually watch, look at the cards? Or how many people just put it in the background? Or do you, like, do you pick it up every once in a while and look? So look at these uh, spiky Pikachu. They're actually such a nice looking card when you have a decent amount of them. Um, I guess I can talk about my Japanese trip. Talk about the vlogging. A uh, few things that I, I want to do better next time and reasons why I didn't do them this time. And everything. So I'm recording this on day five of my vlogs going up. So my day five vlog just went up. So that's when I'm recording this video to give a little bit of a an idea of where I'm at. I have already recorded all of them and I actually did all the I did all the vlogs at the same time and then finished them off and uploaded them all. And then I where's Dragon? Dragon go to the left as well because Dragon is also not very common. Normal water grass. Yep. So yeah, I'm recording this video the same day my day five went up. And I'm sorry if you hear dog barking in the background because uh, she's gone crazy. But where was I? I already lost my train of thought. So I um I did all my lo my vlogs, whatever. I came home pretty much the next day I got home. I started mass editing all of it, getting it all ready. As you know, that's just how I am. <laughs> Everything was fresh in my mind that I just wanted to, I want to do the vlogs first. And then once I did the vlogs, I recorded my pickup video. And so that'll be coming out after the vlogs are all out. I, that probably might be out already before this or maybe after this. I think I'll probably do it before because a lot of these cards that I'm sorting through, I bought in Japan. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to spoil anything or anything like that. I don't really care too much. Like some people are like, Steve, you should do, do videos every three days. And then you can like, people can get excited and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, uh, I'm not really like trying to maximize YouTube fame. Or anything like, you know, maybe some it's good for some people, but you know, I'm just a guy. If I have a video and it's finished, I'll probably just put it up. I won't spam multiple videos in the same day. Is that's just if I, you know, if I see people do that and I'm a their viewer, I subscribe. I watch a lot of YouTube as well. It's kind of just annoying. So, um, these are all water types already sorted. That's pretty good for me. Water, 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 water. So, yeah, so what was I? So, let's talk about the vlogs in general. I mean, that's it's my my main topic in my head right now. I really enjoyed it. Like, I think day one and two, I'm going to be honest, it was really bad. It, it was not great. Days one and two was really bad. I'm going to be honest. It was not great for me personally. I was feeling very uh, reserved and very like, oh, I, I, I'm not a YouTuber. Like, I mean, some people would say, I guess I am, but like, I'm, I'm not really like a typical, like, Whoa, hey guys, sort of like, whoa. You, you guys know what I mean. This is the first fighting type card. That's crazy. Oh, energies and trainers. That'll be over here. That was really uncomfortable to go. We'll put them in the back. Um, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a YouTuber guy. I mean, some people probably would say I am or I'm not or I don't know. But I personally don't think I'm like the same level of charismatic and just like that over the top voice and all these other things. I, I'm, at least I feel like I'm not. Maybe I am. Maybe I don't know what I am. And you know, just being out there, like holding the camera in your face the whole time. And that's why a lot of my footage, like I didn't, because I wish I watched some of it at least, or like got used to the camera before I went. Majority of my footage, I'm like, I'm holding the camera like chest height and looking into it. But most of the time I'm just like looking down, you know what I mean? I'm like looking down into the camera. And it's getting like a really bad shot of me. <laughs> and I didn't realize how bad that shot looked. Well, to me personally, it looked bad. I didn't realize how bad it looked until I got home. And I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> and I did it for the whole trip. So next time I go, I'll hold it up a little bit. But I feel like when you hold it up, you're like so obvious. And Japan's like a place where like no one stands out. Like, you're not supposed to stand out in Japan and be loud and be out of this world. And I didn't want to be like that foreign guy that's just like standing out and kind of like annoying people. We got some Jolteons or legend cards here. I love this Psyduck, so cute. Um, some more grass type cards. I I'll get more into these later, but the cards in general, I will get more into them. I don't know how long this video is going to go for because these stacks here, you see them, there's about 500 cards, 400 cards in each. There is 12 more stacks to the left of me. Like if I just show, let me just pick up this stack from off the camera. 
this stack right here is just fill this every card is just in the ex card or level x card and then you go down here and there's just more hollow cards some cute cards and some non hollows it's and some hollows it's uh you guys i i don't know what i'm doing i i actually might need an employee soon to be able to get through these cards because you know realistically kimberly and i can list 200 ish cards a day if we're going swiftly and they're like easy to do cards and maybe there's like two or three cards per listing so it, you can you can go a little bit fast how doing prime but yeah oh we we need help maybe i gotta stop buying stuff that'd probably be a good idea i just love buying stuff i just love buying stuff but um yeah so i was a little bit embarrassed with the camera the first two days it took me a few days to get out of my shell but no one has seemed to like mention that or anything but you know Based on most of the other, like, Japanese card vlogs that I've seen, I hate the word vlogs, to be honest, but just videos in Japan, a lot of the footage is pretty shaky, unless it's, like, one of the mega top-tier YouTubers. So I feel like for a bottom-tier, entry-level noob YouTuber, I didn't do too, too bad on that front, but I was torn between two worlds because I was there in Japan to, like, buy cards for my store. I was there to buy cards for many reasons like i was buying cards for my collection i was buying cards for my stores i was buying cards to grade i was buying Yu -Gi Oh. i was buying pokemon i was trying to keep like track on like everything and some vs cards here i bought a huge vs card collection recently so you probably see that video come up all the e-series cards of me sorting them out and condition checking also the guy's question do you guys want more condition checking videos because i feel like i have like three or four already right how long are we into the video? About 10 minutes, so maybe one or two people are still watching. Let me know right now. Like, actually let me know. Go and comment. Like, yeah, I want more condition checking videos. Yeah, I don't need one anymore. Of, like, what to look for, what I look for, everything in between. Because I, I feel like they're helpful, even helpful for me to, like, double check some things for myself. But in general, I don't know if I need to have more condition checking videos. Just another video that's just of me talking and rambling. But maybe it might be good. You know, I don't mind doing them. And if people like them, that's a good thing. So, that's that Morty's Gengar. That's pretty good. Um, BS over there. Some more here. And now people are wondering why I'm separating the series as well. It's just because the way we list cards, we put them in the card colors. Because usually, when people buy off us, what I've noticed with single cards over time is like if they buy a Hitmonchan card, they usually buy another Hitmonchan card. Sometimes people buy a BS card, they'll buy another BS card. But most of the time, when they buy a certain type of card, they will... Look at these. These are all Yukimoris. Sorry, I just I know I put these down just then, but... Is that Yukimori? Let me double check. Yeah, it is. Yukimori, Hitmon, Chan, Machamp, Ursa Ring, and a Hitmon Top, and a Hitmon Lee. That's actually crazy. She did all of them. All of the VS cards for this uh this guy. Whoever that is. Runo, maybe? Runo? So, uh, yeah. So, in general, vlogging in Japan, first time, didn't get to rewatch any footage. Overall, pretty happy with the results. Not, not, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm happy regardless. I'm happy that all the videos are up. It's all done. I can move on to my next thing. I can start doing videos like this, my sit-down videos. Things that I personally really enjoy. I enjoy doing this way more than out in the world vlogging because that is actually like a daunting thing to be honest that is a uh, very daunting to do dragon can go way out to the left because we use barely any dragon steel can go there i enjoy this way more the sit downs i honestly you know i've been talking to jay level recently he says i should do lives as you know it's best of both worlds you get lives i can do this i can talk to people plus yeah but i feel like with my schedule, it's really hard. And, you know, I'm in Australia. It's it's not easy as well. It's like everyone's everywhere sort of thing. So, you know what I mean? I feel like if everyone can't catch it, it's just easier to do a pre-recorded video. And if I randomly have to, like, leave or, you know, get packages or do all this other stuff. How's this camera going? Is this 60 FPS? It doesn't feel like it, does it? Hmm. Let me just restart this real quick and double check. It must be. I don't know. I'm so used to this new camera that my old camera for the top-down view just isn't good enough. 
And I was really happy with this new camera I got. It's called an Osmo Pocket 3. That thing made the whole trip so easy with the automatic microphone syncing and everything. Oh, play from a Moltres. That's a lot. Um, there we go. There. Oh, I can hear my dog just going. Rub, rub, rub. And for these kind of videos, these long form ones, should I add music to the back of them? Like lo-fi or like Nintendo themed music or anything? A lot of other people do it. I, I don't know. I feel like it might be better than dead silence, but you know, I, some people told me that they play music on top of my voice at the same time. They play their own lo-fi, so like, maybe I don't need to decide whether to have music for them. But yeah, so Japan General, days one and two is pretty pretty awesome. But I, because I was so focused on buying cards, I really struggled in filming. Because I would go into, this is like pretty much how I would tackle it. I would go into a store, I would see what they have, and I, I would assess the situation. If I try, if I'm going to buy something, I would... um. You know, ask to check cards, pull people over, spend however long that takes. Some because some card stores take a long time for you to check conditions. You can't just like easily see everything. You have to ask for an employee every time. It's quite cumbersome. It's, it's a a lot. It's a lot of time it takes to like get the whole card store buying. I don't know why I put that there. So some stores, if you want to check ten cards, it might take you know two minutes because you know you just go. Okay, I want to check uh, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, this one, this one, whatever. And the guy just pulls it out real quick. Some stores, let's go a little bit lower with this. With my desk, there we go. Lower the desk a little bit because it's, uh, it's hurting my arm. So it wasn't too bad, but if I go into a store and let me move it. If I go into a store and they just, they take like 15, 20 minutes just to get like, you know, 15 to 20 cards out. Because some of them, they just hand them to you when you're next to the case. Some of them make you go to the front of the store, right next to the register or something like that, somewhere multiple employees can be watching you. And, oh, Stormfront Charizard. Oh, it's got a crease. What a game. Played cards be like... I don't know why I checked that, because like, I already checked all these, and they're all damaged or creased or played. So yeah, some stores will just take a long time. Some other stores, you can go, I want to check all these, like, you know, 50 cards. They'll bring them all out for you at the same time. You can just rapid check through them and then go to the next thing. And it's it's such a better buying experience for me when I'm looking to buy lots of, like... I am not. I don't really go there for, like, cheap cards. I wasn't really there for cheap cards. I was there for the cards that are, like, 1,000 to 5,000 yen. You know, they are cheaper than some of the cards I have, obviously, but... I didn't want to deal with, like, lots of, like, $1 cards. I wanted to just be, like... Okay, I want to have, you know, I, I just, I was looking for cards that were like the t 10 to $50 range, just because they're a little bit expensive and, you know, they're not that expensive, but if you buy like 50 or 100 of them, then, you know, it adds up quite fast, I will say, myself. So, checking and getting it done, and then after I finished checking and then buying the cards finally, I was with my friend West for almost the whole trip, and then I have to like, Ask the employees, like, oh, hey, can I film? Can I do this? Can I do that? Is it okay to take pictures of your showcase? You know, making a YouTube video. Uh, I want to, you know, display the store on my YouTube video, etc. And some of them are just like, no. And then some of them are like, yes. And if they say yes, then I have to go back through the store, show all the case again. I have to go slow. You know, it's very busy in Japan. Like, weekends are really bad, especially for card stores because there's so many, like, younger people out. And we're gonna, like, you know, they don't work on the weekend, maybe, but it's, it was, uh, yeah, sometimes it's really hard to walk around, honestly, and then get the footage. So I feel bad in saying, like, because I am a beginner, right? Like, I'm just gonna say, I'm because I'm a beginner, and then coupled with the fact that I don't speak Japanese, and then tripled with the fact that I don't really know how to do a vlog. <laughs> Uh, the whole thing probably could have been better, but if I ever go again with the intention to make videos, look at this the card is sun faded, and this card's not. You can see the difference. That's kind of crazy. Um, if I ever, you know, go there with the intention to make more videos, why do I have so many of these? It's gonna take so long to sell all this. Look, your legends, other Charizard level X. Oh, ten more Charizard level X rockets Entei. 
Some people might look at these cards and think this is impressive, but this is actually really bad because I have so many cards that I just haven't been able to like sell them. So like, or even work through them. And that's really bad business because I'm buying cards and they're just sitting on my shelf. I would just get more money if I just didn't buy the cards and just put the money in a high interest savings account. So anyway, if I ever go again to, to Japan, because this trip was offset by the fact that like, okay, I'm going, it cost me like 2000 or $2,200 for the flights plus all accommodation and a little bit of food. And you know, I don't really count food when I'm traveling or if I'm going somewhere because I'm going to be at home. And if I'm at home, well, then I'm going to have to eat anyway, like at home. So I'm going to be eating regardless of food. And I, I eat pretty good at home. So like, it's not like it's cheaper at home for me. Because, you know, I, I like to eat good and I'm a fat bastard. That's why. So I don't count food as much as maybe other people will. And I've already been to Japan twice. And I already like did the whole like trying all the expensive restaurants and stuff like that. And I'm just happy to get food in my belly and go. So if I ever do it again and go to Japan again, I will go with a more video mind. So because this trip, the money made like I. I need to like, you know, buy items and search and spend time finding, I guess, deals or whatever, or like mint cards to grade where you can like arbitrage and make money. I needed to, you know, make money to offset the cost of the trip. That's basic business 101. But, you know, if I don't want to say if the vlogs do good, because deep down, all my videos are already done. All the vlogs are already done. If no vlog, if none of the vlogs get any views anymore, I don't really care because I went and recorded it like for myself. I wanted to see if I could do it, see how it would come out and like finish. It was kind of like a quest. You know what I mean? But if I were to do it again, because I've already done it once, if I were to do it again and like, you know, to benefit my YouTube channel or however I want to say it, well, then I would have to go with the mind of like, okay, I need to create like some good videos. This is a nice Delta species holos. Rayquaza, Latios, Latios. What's the condition on these? What would you guys say that is? That light play on some of those. This one's uh, actually quite nice. What's wrong with this card? Oh, the top corner's bent. That's sad. Um, that's why it's in here. Not gonna be any hidden gems in my play pile. I'm pretty thorough. I mean, if you buy them raw, you want from a, a binder set. Yeah, sure. But if I'm trying to grade them, then no. And I probably paid a lot of card, a lot of money for some of these cards too, which is uh, really sad. So yeah, if I do go again, it's gonna be with a more of like I'm making these vlogs and I want them to be good and watchable. And I want, you know, the money to be made from them. And if anyone's ever curious with like how YouTube works and how much money you get paid for videos, just message me. I'll talk to you all about it, about how much mine make. I mean, it's not much. <laughs> like if I'm being honest with the amount of time, it, some of them take me and especially the vlogs, like my camera, I break it down. The camera cost me $1,100. So Australian, it, maybe it's a little bit less around the world, like converted. I think it's like 15% less than in America, but the camera cost me $1,100, the creator combo with the microphone and everything. And then I had to spend like, you know, a few hundred dollars on like a backpack, some winter clothes, because I don't even have winter clothes because it doesn't get cold in Australia where I live. Not that cold. So I had to, I had to spend like maybe $1,500, $1,600 just on stuff. I had to buy extra SD cards, a power pack to keep like, you know, microphone, camera, all kind of like, charge throughout the trip because I'm leaving the, the apartment for multiple hours a day. But yeah, it was, um, I just lost my train of thought like instantly. That's really bad. Oh, love this Alteria, but why is there so many? Um, oh, what was I saying? But yeah. So the cost me around $1,600 just to do those videos. And the main reason why I got that camera, this one in particular, I'm looking at it is I wanted a better webcam for when I do these videos. Because the other webcam is like 1080p, 30fps. I mean, this is smooth 60fps, HD 4K. Oh, my dog's going crazy right now. So I'm really sorry if you guys can hear that in the background. But I'm sure I'll drown it out with something. Um, so yeah, so like this trip... It's not needed or necessary. I just put all these normal pipes in this steel. I do that all the time, steel and normal. I shouldn't even separate them because they look so similar, but 
sometimes it's easier because people buy, buy magneton, they buy magneton and they get them all from the steel type or electric type, or if they buy like bronzong, whatever. I actually had someone buy a bunch of bronzongs from me the other day. That was pretty funny. Sorry, I'm not showing these cards off more. I, I might show them more later. Like maybe in a condition checking video. Like we're not while I, well, maybe I break down each type and do some condition checking, but there is just so much guys. Like I have, I'm not even 20% done and we are 10 minutes in. Oh, that's actually not that bad. This is going a lot faster than I thought, but um, yeah. So what was I saying? So the, yeah, it cost me $1,600 plus the 2000 for the combination of flights all these played secret rares it's so common to get these in just played conditions it's so sad how hard these are to find in like genuinely good conditions it's honestly kills me even seeing them unsleeved right now really kills me but you know they all have like little dents or edge wear all over and it doesn't really change much and i'm not like shaking them around for you like there was a blue card in there blue fighting time so be very careful with those Get this next stack so yeah I, I don't know how much money my my vlogs are going to make i mean who knows right but i was hope i'm hopeful that the vlogs will pay off half the price of the camera that's all i hope i don't care about the trip i don't care about i'm gonna i'm just breaking it down and being honest with you guys like i'm a businessman everything gets broken down for me i'm not gonna say like oh i just bought the camera anyway like no i mean that's a that that's a hope right you hope that you just you know, you, I did the thing, I bought the camera, I did the videos. It cost me like what, $600 of the backpack, the mount, everything. And then what else? I had to... I'm trying to think. What else did... Oh, yeah. Time, right? So I, it, I, rec I had around 20 hours of recorded footage from the whole trip. But not everything was like usable and some of it was like pretty bad. And <laughs> pretty bad. Oh, that was about 17 hours, sorry. And my vlogs all up are eight hours and two minutes. I completed the full video. I'm not sure if I talked about that, but I combined all my videos yesterday and rendered that. And I have an eight hour vlog that I'm going to put up of just every all the videos together because I like it when people do like part one to part 10 and then like they completely release like the whole thing in one. I think that's completely awesome. I think that's one of the coolest things. You make a whole series sort of thing. A lot of like RuneScape streamers that I watch do it. So, you know, I'm happy to do that. And yeah, that's eight hours and two minutes overall footage, edited footage of all the vlogs on 14 days. I said I didn't want children because it's uh, a lot of effort. And then Kim goes and gets a puppy. It's just, that thing is crazy. Don't ever get a corgi puppy if you want like an easy puppy, that's for sure. So, um, where was I talking about? I was talking about the money and the camera and everything getting it back and the uh, uploading an eight hour video, everything. Oh, I actually got so screwed over. So I rendered the video and it was 300 gigabytes, eight hours, 4K. And I was like, hell yeah. Took my computer like four and a half hours to be able to do that. And I don't have a, I don't have a bad computer. I bought like a crazy computer set up for when I play games. But I'm very, very uh, sad to say that my full video was 300 gigabytes. And when I went to upload it, YouTube's like, oh, by the way, you can only have a 256 gigabyte file to upload. You can't upload that. And I spent like four or five hours like waiting for it to render. So that was grief, to be honest. That was like a very, like you griefed me moment. So that's pretty funny. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm just overall super happy with how it all panned out. Now, do I think the videos will get back you know, half the price of all my equipment? I'm not sure. My lifetime earnings from YouTube is around six thousand dollars. So to get, you know, ten percent of that lifetime earnings again just from eleven vlogs probably won't happen. But I'll keep you guys updated. I feel like it's a pretty good thing for me to share. Like, oh, because it's like I'm putting effort into it, and I'm showing you guys the reward for effort. And I don't think that's a bad thing for reward to not be shown. This light is uh, really troll, to be honest. It's really troll. It's annoying me. That's like on the screen. It's it's, mm. and that's the reason why I can't do live streams. Uh, there's too many cats. Sorry, we're back again. Um, what was I talking about? I was talking about um, showing the the rewards for effort. I think it's really important. I I don't think it is shown too much in today's society. Like 
the rewards. I mean, there's a lot of people that are like flexing, but they, they don't really show what they did to, to be able to get what they're flexing, I guess, is what I'm talking about. So, you know, when I'm flexing my YouTube payouts of 20 to $40 per day, I mean, that's not actually, no, that's not even right. On a day that I don't post a video, I probably get like 500 views, maybe a little bit less. And I get like pretty close to maybe like five to $10 every day, which to me is amazing. It's like, I love the YouTube monetization system more than anything because my effort, like I get rewarded based on my effort through the amount of views and everything I get. And that's why I don't tie myself to subscribers or views or that's why I don't even like ask people. <clears throat> Sorry, it's already gone. That's why I don't like spam my, my videos everywhere. I'll do like one Instagram story every time I post one just because I feel like that's you know, pretty normal for most people. And I'll, I'll do like, yeah, one story. I don't go, oh, like and subscribe every video, like all these other things. Because like, I want it to be, for me personally, it's like a challenge. It's like a quest sort of thing. I want it to be like natural sort of thing. Like, so when someone comments, it's like natural. So when someone likes the video, it's like natural. When someone subscribes to my channel, it's natural. I want to see like the natural progression of my character, I guess, which is my YouTube character. That sounds really dumb when I'm saying that. Like you guys are probably like, well, what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> Not everything's a game, Steve. Well, it is. I make everything a game because it's more fun for me that way. So I will be, I will talk about it forever pretty much as long as I'm on YouTube I'll show you guys the reward I got for you know putting in certain um, certain levels of effort and you know you'll I've you've probably seen on my channel when there's really low effort videos and you know they don't have much editing or not much plan or rambling kind of like this one you know they probably won't get as many views as something you know as flying to another country and putting in a lot of effort but I'm always happy to share since day one um it's been a documentation of like this uh, YouTuber journey and I'm still incredibly small and that's incredibly fine for me. I like it that way, to be honest. It's, uh, yeah, the people that do come here and watch this and consume it, I'm more than happy to share with you guys because a large majority of you have been here for like since the start. So thank you for that. And yeah, so I mean, my plan is, like I was saying before, if the YouTube videos, so many cards. LP Gyarados Hollow, how many have we got? Six, eight. This is the culmination of way too much money spent on collections. Like this, this is, this is like I get the cards in, I like half sort them and then like I keep them in a thing and then I do this and do that. And then I get too caught up with everything, the grading, everything returns. Regardless, these cards are actually pretty clean. This, don't think this stack should be in here. I might have pulled this out of the wrong box. But yeah, my plan is if I can get paid back for half of my stuff, I guess. If I can get paid back for half of my the stuff I bought to make the vlogs from the vlogs, that's awesome. That would be like that would be like finishing the game. Because I'm not even gonna get close to that. Like to get eight hundred dollars, I guess, Australian from my videos. That would have to be pretty close to like seventy to a hundred thousand views, maybe more. Like that, I can't even. Yeah, and even like on YouTube, when it, when I'm talking about like making money from YouTube, because it's so personal and everything, a lot of people have like found my stores through YouTube. They have like bought from me through YouTube. So most of the gains I get from YouTube aren't even from. Sorry about that. Just threw that card on the ground. Aren't even from like the direct viewers they're from you know people buying off my stores people looking at my stuff people supporting me that way i sold like a few trophy cards through youtube just from people seeing them on the channel which i think is absolutely amazing like it's an amazing connection level thing and making the youtube has made me more trustworthy as a seller and a businessman i guess making the youtube has made me better at thinking has made me a more personable person has made me put a lot of things into perspective, I guess. It's, uh, th there's so many benefits. This dog has gone crazy. There's so many benefits from YouTube that aren't included in like making money from it, from the ads. But you know, if you do make money from the ads, which is awesome. I mean, I've been talking about making money on ads on YouTube for like 20 minutes now, or however long. 
But like, I just needed to explain to you guys how good it feels. So no one has to directly give me money. And it's just like the big corporation give me money. That's the, that comes down to the gist of it, which I think is a great system for, for the world. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to stop talking about that for a bit because it's pretty boring. Let's keep talking about cards. But yeah. If, if my vlogs get... I was hoping... Because, you know, even though it's not that... Even though it's not that important, it's... Uh, if, I, if my vlogs get... I was thinking like 25,000 views altogether, which would be like be like way higher than average views for my channel on each video. So I'm shooting pretty high with that one. But if I get 25k, I'll be over the moon. I'll be over the moon. Like overall, all 11 videos, plus the last video with like the mega, the mega video that I made eight hours. It's uploading right now. <laughs> it's like, I'm in Australia. We don't have that good internet when it comes to uploading. And I think it was like 12, 13 hour upload. So that'll be done tomorrow, I guess, as it is quite late tonight. So that's, uh, that's pretty funny. Uh, put that there. Energy cards can go over here. Dust globs from the VS deck. We have almost finished part one of this, which is great. I'm sorting cards a lot faster than I thought I would. But sorting them into color is not even step one. It's like step 0 0.5. So when it comes to sorting cards and getting cards prepared for listing, this is like maximizing this part and getting it done as like quickly as possible is probably one of the ways you can really scale because it, it wouldn't really matter if these cards were yes you know, i'm not gonna lie a lot of these cards are pretty expensive like this dragon air t primo this rayquaza delta and it's damaged but it's got crease but this is still like 20 30 40 dollars whatever it is so it's even if this was one dollar cards or two dollar cards dealing with it and learn and knowing how and dealing with it swiftly so you can just move on to the next thing is really important. So the first thing I do is like put everything into color as it just makes it easier, especially when you're listing, like when you're searching your active listing, let's say I'm I'm working on Groudon cards. So all these are going to be alphabetically sorted after this, but I'm working on Groudon cards and And usually I wouldn't alphabetically sort them all like straight away. I would just keep them in their stacks. And then, you know, when I get to, if I, it's all finished, right? Let me just pull it back for a second. I finish everything. It's all sorted into type. I would put them all in boxes labeled with the type. And then when I start the fighting type, I'll alphabetically sort it then, and then condition check and then start listing. So that's when I know when I get to like played, that three conditions, near mint, played and damage. When I get to played, it'll be all the played Groudons in a row. And then whatever Pokemon comes after that. Played Hitmonchan, played Hitmonlee and everything. And there might be multiple of the same cards. So when I go to update my listings, I work and work on the same card at the same time. So I don't have to consistently go back and forth. If I just sorted them into condition without alphabetically, let's say these two shamans get mixed up in the piles and you know, the 50th card is shaman and the 70th card is shaman. I have to re -up, like reopen the listing, check the price again, do all that again. It's a lot easier if you alphabetically do it and put them all together. And then when you condition check them, if it's the same condition, you can upload it at the same time. Now, sometimes I'll have to upload the same card three times, finding a near mint one, a played one, and a damaged one. And I'm perfectly fine with that. I've got an Umbreoni X there. That's pretty good. Um, I'm going to raise this chair up, I think. My stack's oh, pretty bad right now. Oh, just slammed my desk. These stacks are not very good, but that's fine. I moved a little bit forward there. Can we adjust this? Oh. Oh, that's zoom. That is the wrong button. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me, uh, there, there we go. All right. So, yeah. So when I'm talking about sorting and getting these ready, this is the reason why I do it. But, and that, I don't sort all of them into A to Z at the same time, because realistically, you want to start working on cards as fast as possible after you buy cards. And not everyone's going to have, you know, on this desk right here is around seven, 8,000. So when you have seven, 8,000 cards, you got to, you got to list them all eventually. Like I don't have infinite money. So as a store, once I have it all sorted into type, I can just work on fire cards and then A to Z them, condition check them and start listing. And if I keep buying more cards and more collections, as they get sorted, I'll put the rest of them into the psychic, the rest of them into the normal, the rest of them into the steel. 
And then when eventually when I get back to doing like the steel, steel or psychic or normal type, whatever, then I A to Z them. So like all the new cards, if this was A to Z, if I do this tomorrow, if I sort normal type into A to Z, and then I get new cards in, I'll have to A to Z those new cards again and then slot them in, which is going to be really, really annoying and quite cumbersome. Plus, then I have to move all the cards so many more times. It's it's like double handling, I guess, is the word used. So I hope that's understood of like why I do things a certain way. Now, it's not the perfect way. Not everyone has to do it this way. But this is a way that works for, for me with the way I do things. Some people, uh, they don't have, you know, the same type of listings that I have. They don't do it the same. They just do one listing for each, and it doesn't really matter. If you know the price of all the cards... Well, I would personally think doing condition checking and then listing is always good, not just taking photos and then be like, oh, what's condition of this? Oh, let's put it under like plate or light plate or whatever. But I think at a minimum doing the conditions and then listing. So you know in your head, like if all these Jirachis, when I list them, if they're all near mint, I know they're all near mint. And then when I list them, I can do them all the same price because they're all near mint. Does that make sense? Does, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So... That's the reason why I do this, uh, the way I do it. So if I put uh, this, this, um, this over here. What else do we have to talk about today? I mean, I, I've missed doing these videos. And did you guys know that I have my one of my sorting videos has like twelve thousand views? What? What is? What is that? Because I was when I was with a uh, J Love in Japan. If you guys don't know who J Love is, his name's OK J Love on YouTube. He's a big YouTuber, and he graced me with his time when we were in Japan together. And he's a close friend of mine, and so uh, pretty fun hanging around with him. He's a funny guy. But when I was in Japan, we were just talking about YouTube stuff because you know he was talking to me, concerned. He's like, "Why didn't you upload? Why didn't you do this? You know, you should put up. A... What's going on?" He wanted to know why I didn't like do many videos, and I talked about it before in my uh, Japan sorting video of why I just felt like a lack of inspiration, I guess, for certain types of things, and I just was lacking inspiration for making YouTube content, and I just didn't want to go up and just make inspirational less, less inspirational content than maybe I normally would, and now I'm back in the zone, I'm back in the driver's seat, and I'm feeling really good, so... I'm happy to do it now, so that's perfectly fine also. If you guys don't feel like, you know, you're on top of anything, it's perfectly fine to not do it and not focus on a certain area. Perfectly fine to do that. So that's that's how I felt, and that's why I, you know, didn't post for a while. But then he's like, yeah, geez, like, check out all your videos. You got this, this much, you got this one with this much, and I was like, I didn't even know. I have one video that has like 75,000 views. I mean, that that's like my day in the life of... Pokemon card seller or whatever that is. What the? That was crazy when that happened. I, I woke up to like 100 plus Instagram messages. And then all throughout the day, I was getting mass messages. I got like thousands of comments on YouTube. I actually responded to every single one. I hate having my YouTube comments not responded to. Because someone... I feel like if someone's willing to like reach out and message or comment, I feel like most creators, if they have the time, they should just respond i don't feel like it should be like a normal thing for people to like not respond to people who are like supporting you but that's me some people are really big and you know they, they're so big that they don't have time let's turn my echo on but um i don't feel like i'm one of those people so i'm happy to respond to every comment and maybe it makes me look like some desperate idiot or whatever, but I don't really care. I think it's uh, I think it's fun, to be honest. I've met so many people through just like YouTube and responding to comments and responding to Instagram messages, and I've so many people have supported my store because of it. So many people have like become friends. We've become I made friends, which is crazy. Oh, that that dog is being very silly in the background. So yeah, not really sure. I mean, there's so many topics 
so I, like I had in my mind and then I sit down and then I'm just trying to hyper focus on the colors and try to get them all in the same space. Sorry that I keep adjusting the light, by the way. I don't think that many people actually watch these things like a lot, like just watch the whole time. But I, I'm trying to like um, be able to see the cards. It's They all blend in a little bit after a while. And that's also the worst thing about shopping in Japan for cards. Because like you walk in and there's like 10 cases and there's just cards from top to bottom. And you know, I sh like it's it's taboo, I guess, to like have the idea of like, I'm going to go into the card stores and make money. Like I can understand how that can be seen as taboo. I don't really see it that way because they, you know, all their cards are available for sale for whatever price they put on. And if people buy them, they buy them. If they don't, whatever. And, you know, you're in Japan, you're supporting the Japan economy, which kind of needs a lot of help. So it, no matter how way I swing it, I guess you could see me as like a bad guy, but people are going to see you as a bad guy no matter what you do if they want to see you as a bad guy. So you walk into the stores and you're like, oh my God, that's top to bottom. You have to process that information so fast of like, what am I looking for? What do I need? And what can I get to arbitrage it or like, you know, take advantage of the fact that you're here. So the, the main things that I focused on were Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And a lot of people think, you know, my name is Pokemon Steven. Why do you go to Japan to buy Yu-Gi-Oh? The thing is with Yu-Gi-Oh and before anyone is like, Steve never talks about Yu-Gi-Oh. And when he does, he's like always, you know, ah, whatever. Some some guy messaged me. He's like, Steve, I'm going to start buying a whole bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh because you're buying Yu-Gi-Oh. And I'm like, bro, that's a bad idea. So like, that's a really bad idea because not because I don't want you to buy Yu-Gi-Oh and compete with me. It's just the cards are so finicky and hard to grade. Like Pokemon's easy. Like, honestly, if I had a card in these piles that was like mint, and after moving them around like this for for a while and like, you know, messing around with the unsleeved, getting prepared for the video and everything, there's still a very high chance that, that card's still mint condition and it can get 10. But like Yu-Gi-Oh, if you like breathe on the corner or if you rub the corner or if you sleeve it wrong, the card, because the corners are, are, are square, like the card will just get edgeware and you have no chance of getting a 10. The centering is terrible on almost every Yu-Gi-Oh card. It is honestly like... Thing is, that's the main reason why I went there. I was like, I want to pick up more modern Yu-Gi-Oh. I want to get more old Yu-Gi-Oh. But I just struck out so many times buying it online. I just haven't been able to find a way personally to buy Yu-Gi-Oh cards effectively online. And I don't know much about Yu-Gi-Oh, so that's probably why. But I want to go there in person. Obviously, most of the cards I'm looking at, I'm trying to price match them. Like, you know, look at like you know stores like maybe Card Rush Yu-Gi-Oh. They they have pretty good uh a pretty good rough price range there higher than most but it, if you're paying like under their price and the cards in gem mint you're in pretty good hands but i feel like it's one of those things what are you doing there where if you don't check the card in person for you go you just you just have a much lower advantage if you're trying to grade them I don't think selling Gem Mint Yu-Gi-Oh is a thing you can do. I think if you sell old Yu-Gi-Oh cards, you can probably sell like played, damaged, whatever. It's old. People love Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is massive in Japan. It's not that big in the Western world, to be honest. It's so big in Japan. Majority of my Yu-Gi-Oh buyers are from like Japan and other Asian countries. It's very, very uh, not that often, unless it's like a really popular character that it's not Japanese that buys the PSA 10 Yu-Gi-Oh that I try to sell. And I have a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh cards and I don't actually sell that much. And I'm I'm down so much on Yu-Gi-Oh. Like I can't even, I don't want to say down, right? Because like we have to wait for that stuff to sell. But it doesn't sell as fast as Pokemon. And a lot of people will have a rude awakening. But kind of like what we're going into now with Pokemon, how it's like selling slower and prices are down across the board on like every single card, which maybe we can talk about in a little bit. But Yu-Gi-Oh! in general is one thing I was mainly doing so I could just check the cards in person and be happy with the condition. And I'm sure even with all the ones that I bought, I spent like 3 million yen on Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. I'm sure half of them probably aren't even going to get 10s. Even after I like meticulously checked them. Some stores have such terrible lighting. Other stores have just bad this. Other stores have this. It was like frustrating to say the least of that. There we go. Air console. 
Um, yeah, so I was trying to get mint Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and then I was also trying to get Pokemon cards like these. These bad boys that I've been sorting for the past ever. To sell as raw plate on my eBay store. And the main reason for both of those is that's the things that I enjoy doing the most at this current time. I like grading cards. I like grading Pokemon too. But my Pokemon are grading stacks over there are really high. And I'll do some grading videos. I don't know how many I want to do. Like, I don't want to be a video spam guy. But, like, I like spamming videos, so who knows. But I have around 200 to 300 cards from every type separated. So I have fire, dragon, water, 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 water types. And I'll probably do PSA submission videos of all of them. But I, I wanted to wait until I actually submit them because... I'm waiting for a PSA uh, dealer account to, to come in for me. So I'm, I'm waiting for that to happen so I can submit under my own dealer account and pump my numbers up a little bit. <laughs> and we can talk about the Pokemon card market in a little bit. Not really market, I guess, but just how I feel in general. But yeah, so Yu-Gi-Oh! The stuff does not sell very fast. There's not much there. The only thing good about it is like you're one of the only people selling it if someone wants it. But... More people are doing it every single day. The tens are so hard to get. I'm down so much. Even with all like the knowledge and the ability that I have of grading and everything, I like I feel like if I break even on Yu-Gi-Oh in like a year and a half's time, that's like an insane success story. <laughs> but like the thing, I like to make things challenging for myself, so it's kind of like a quest that I've set on myself. Um stupidly. A stupid dumb quest, because I'm I'm stupid. But yeah, we can talk about Pokemon cards after I drink some water. I think that'd be a oh, good idea. Drink some water first. No, I'll put that here. Oh, hope you guys have been doing good. Please give me. Oh, let me move that. Let me give me all the feedback you guys possibly can. I mean, I love feedback. These are my favorite videos, just sitting here chatting. It would actually be really good to do live streams. The only thing that would make live streams bad is if my dog starts going crazy, I need to go help him out. My cats start going crazy or emergency happens or I don't know, but all live streamers, they all deal with it. So I don't know why I wouldn't be able to. So I have all my stacks to give you an idea of the water stack. That's how many cards we're at. That looks around like 500. So we have about 10 more stacks this size to deal with. Uh, let me drag this back down because I'm going to go back into relaxation mode in a second. So let me push all these stacks back as I make new ones because these are all a little bit too big. Ugh, these stacks are so bad, but it is what it is. I'm just sliding the cards across, trying to be as safe as possible. Ugh, my bastard on. Um, that can go there. But yeah, life would be pretty cool. Because then at least like I don't have to like go crazy coming up with like so many topics on the fly as I do have topics before I start but I just forget I just honestly forget like I get a distraction or something happens I get a phone call I get an email I get some discord messages you know I try to attend to stuff you just never know you never know what's happening so how did I have this I should have kept one card from each type Ember Steel was down there Fire was there Dark was up there Water was here Lightning was in the top right Dragon was down here. So this stuff is um that I'm storing through now is I don't know what to call it. It's like not as good, I guess. Um Yeah, it's not as good stuff, unfortunately. I think fire was in the middle and fighting was here. It's majority just hollows and stuff from EX, Diamond and Pearl, whatever. So let's uh let's talk about Pokemon for a bit, shall we? So I think it, I think everyone's kind of noticed. At least I've kind of noticed that Pokemon sales are down. Well, actually, let's rephrase that. Uh prices of Pokemon cards are down. So if you had a card that was previously priced at maybe two hundred dollars, it might be a hundred dollars. And um it might not sell as fast at a hundred than it did at two hundred when it, everything was popular. And why do I think this is? I think uh, we're just going through a, a bunch of hype with Japanese cards and everyone's getting into it, but kind of squeezed 
the world got kind of squeezed by you know life being pretty bad all around the world and realizations set in for a bunch of people me included as, as for sure and selling cards in general is just a lot harder than it previously was and honestly i'm kind of all here for it it's um would sound dumb that a card seller would say that but i i would really enjoy if prices went down a bunch on everything so i can you know kind of buy more and more and more and get more together because if we ever get into one of those crazy times ever again i would love to be uh in the spot of having as much as possible and selling you know selling being a little bit harder is annoying but there's a lot of people in the space who are very uh i guess low skilled is what i would probably use i don't want to beat around the bush who kind of benefit a lot from pokemon being i guess quote unquote easy easy to sell especially japanese cards and unfortunately i don't think that is the case anymore so you kind of need to offer a surface or you know take much less profit per item overall to have something successful going now oh, these stacks are already done i'm just going to move you all the way down there but yeah, it's uh, everything's down and it's relaxing. But while I was in Japan, it definitely didn't feel like it. Every place was just as busy as Worlds. But I think lower prices overall is is way better than super high hype prices where everyone is just getting destroyed. And you buy it 200 and then it goes to like 500 the next day. And then it's like 1,000. And everyone who sells feels really bad. And then it goes from 1,000. And then it goes all the way down to... Wait, where's my fire? This is fighting. It goes from a thousand to five hundred to six hundred to two hundred the next day, and then everyone who bought feels really bad, and everyone just feels really bad all around. And I don't think that's healthy. I think consistent small price increase increases over time as things get harder to get, as things get you know more cards get released, and then like the supply of like older and older cards becomes harder. The supply of older and older boxes is just harder to get. I think stuff like that is way better for long-term health. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here for long-term health as I'd like to keep doing this for the foreseeable future. I don't have a plan. A lot of people ask me, Steve, what's your plan? What's your plan, Steve? Hey, tell me. Oi. Tell me what your plan is for the next five years. Man, I just hope I'm still alive. <laughs> After that, whatever. I'm not going to plan that far in the future. You never know what's going to happen. I might be working a job next week. No one wants to buy cards anymore. So, um, <laughs> yeah, not quite that bad, but pretty close to that. These cards are all steel type. So I don't know what I did here. They must have been pre-sorted into type before I got to them. All the way up to around, what is this, the Bronzong M? Pichu. I don't know, so... I'm not sure of the English side, but I think it's uh, probably experiencing similar, or it was anyway. But Pokemon is still incredibly popular. Graded cards in 10 still sell for more than the 9 option. Let me put the steel cards with the other steel cards. Oh, let me see. I did sort these. I had these like pre-sorted from months ago. I did this. I actually sorted these into these stacks like six months ago. That's pretty funny, right? I don't think there's anything here like entirely unsorted oh here we go um so yeah it's all around i personally think it's a good thing but obviously it's bad for money making i'm not gonna lie there was times last year where i was like what the heck is going on when i woke up to like 10 fifteen thousand dollars of sales from like overnight and some days it was more as well like had months i had one month that was like two hundred and twenty thousand or whatever and then you know as good as it felt and as high as a kite that i was on top of the world um it wasn't healthy it wasn't sustainable it leaves like a very bad taste not in my mouth but just like oh, that's, but that's not the right word no i take that back it leaves a, a bad view of what like creating a card store looks like and buying and selling cards and building inventory and building value and building a collection it felt more like a crypto you know if you got lucky if you bought something that other people wanted to pay a lot more for 
it was really bad. And then the fallout at, at like the July, I think it started the fallout, July, August. Oh, no. I got like $25,000 worth of returns because people paid a lot of money for cards that I had listed. And I was trying to take advantage of the situation of prices going up and I wanted to sell as much as I can. And obviously some people, they uh, bought more than they could have afforded and they, they mass charged back me and they mass returned the items, which is uh, pretty annoying to deal with, but is what it is. They have the option to do that. That's why eBay is good. So um, yeah, I, I much prefer the way it is now. The numbers are a lot smaller, the sales are a lot slower, and everything in between, but the cards are a lot cheaper. So it's it's a best case scenario, I think. I'd, I'm happy to put in work and do stuff to get my reward rather than, you know, rely on these crazy swings and crazy uh, hype moments. So I, if we have a whole year of just like... This shifter EX is like whatever price it is now, fifteen, twenty dollars, twenty five dollars, maybe more. At the end of the year, it's like five to ten percent more, or it's within the same price. I'm happy. I just want things to like stay smooth. So maybe I can buy like a whole bunch of something for like ten dollars and sell it for like twelve, thirteen dollars, fifteen dollars, sixteen dollars slowly, something like that, and make small margins, and just keep repeating them and like refine myself. That's what it used to be like. That's like, honestly, right now, how it is in Pokemon, aside from like, you know, PSA 10 still being so desirable, this is how it used to be. You used to get like cheap cards, every card was cheap, and you sell it for a few dollars more, and then you go on to the next thing. There was none of this like, these are bad cards to use as examples. Like, you know, there's Umbreon Dark Rush. Does this really deserve to be $400, $500 PSA 10, $300 PSA 10 like it was? It's a cool Umbreon card, but it's probably not. Like this Dark Dragonite, these are really expensive in 10. And yeah, they are hard to get from the thing, but should it be like a $30 raw card that goes to 1000 Whatever it is, I'll sell into it because that's um, that's my job. But some things needed to come back down to earth, I think. Well, no, I think I know they should have come back down to earth. So we're here. It's the current environment. I've uh, learned to agree with it. And I want to agree with it because I'm happy about it, but... As much as I say, like, oh, I'm really happy about this, there is that little voice in the back of my head. It's like, Steve, like, do you remember how crazy it was? Like, do you remember? I'm like, yeah, I mean, I woke up to feelings that I never thought I would have felt. And it was, like, completely, like, life-changing, you know? But theoretically, uh, I don't really need much as a person, as a human, so I'm happy with whatever happens. So if we get slow and steady, wins the race for the rest of the year, just sell a little bit here, sell a little bit there. I'll probably have to slow down buying because like it's simply not possible for me to sell as many cards as I'm trying to buy and that's per that's, that's personally that's fine but you know I hate missing out on deals right I don't think anyone likes missing out on deals so yeah I'm uh, yapping a little bit now about this but I'm sure many other people share the sentiment with the Pokemon market or whatever and I'm you know I have cards I have like 30 40 of some cards that will like thousand dollars twelve hundred dollars that are now not a thousand dollars not twelve hundred they might be like four hundred or three hundred that's fine i also sold a lot of cards that were three hundred four hundred and then they were a thousand so i don't know my advice is if it happens again just sell and take as much uh, profit as you can is if you need money and don't look back i don't think you should ever worry because as long as you are happy with your decision no one else should really need to care. So these all cards, I think I know what I need to do with those. So what I'm going to do here is move all my stacks onto the other stacks. And back in the few months ago, I bought some cards and I separated them all. And what I did was I'm trying to get away from listing common cards for the next ever. <laughs> so I'll explain what a common card is like. You know, we got these cards here, Dark Houndoom. I would list these because Houndoom is very popular and Dark Houndoom is very popular. But like these Dark Macargos, I'm not going to list these. This Chimchar, I'm not going to list those. Darimaka, everything. Like I'm going to try and not list those cards. So I'm going to take them out of these stacks and then put them into like my bulk sorted boxes. All in the past like year, we've just been listing like one, two dollar cards, two dollar cards. We haven't cared too much. But after breaking down everything that we have to list, like the problem is this isn't even everything. 
this is just cards that I haven't sorted into type. I have another five, 6,000 cards that I need to sort into type or already are sorted into type. And I, oh my God. Oh, it's just it's so much everything. It's so overwhelming. And then I have cards that are like, like I, I bought a bunch of stuff while I was in Japan. I spent like 4 million yen online while I was in Japan. And I haven't even, I haven't even received those cards yet. Because I just don't want them yet from... I left them with a like, middleman. I was like, look, just ship them to me in like three weeks. Because I do not have time to go through those. And I don't want them just sitting around. They're much safer at your house. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to pull these normal cards out. And I'm just going to sort through them quickly. While I talk. And just figure out what a desirable card is. And what it isn't. And if it doesn't feel like it's working. I'll do it. So yeah, this... Whatever this is. Some Fortress... G and Chatot, I think that is. I think that's Chatot. You know. I'm just not going to list those because I'd rather spend the time listing like these EV promos, which are really good, these non-hollow EVs. They sell for a few dollars. I'm, I'm just going to do this while I talk as well. And before I start, might as well get some water here. So I think I'll upload this, photo, this video just tonight. It's not a big deal. But what... Let's just tell me, I want you guys to tell me if anyone's still watching this. This is the worst video I've ever done, probably, with so many breaks and stops. But I want someone to tell me what their favorite part of my vlog was, or at least comment on them. Because, you know, I, it, there's so many nice comments on this vlog. They're just like, Steve, you're back, or Steve, thank you, or Steve, this is so cool. You know, I, I do like that, but like, I want you to tell me if I like some of the video that I did. Like one part, it, you enjoyed it and like it helped you out or something like that. Or like you saw something that you haven't seen before or something. I, I don't know. Just like uplift the mood of like me doing something, I guess. Oh, what, what am I saying? You know what I mean? Like, or like Steve, I wish you would have went here. Or Steve, maybe go here next time. Like, I don't even care if you say that. Because if you say that, that means I have something else to look forward to. Like, do do. Are the vlogs enjoyable enough where, like, you would watch another one? Like, if I wanted to do another one, when would I need to go? Like, would I need to go sooner than later? Or do I need to wait six months? Or if I do go six months, like, do I go to other parts of Japan? Like, I, I only went to, like, Osaka and Tokyo. Nagoya. Like, I didn't go, like, everywhere. Like, I went to the most common places for cards but they have card stores all over japan all the way down the bottom all the way at the top like do i go there as well like do i hit up those places i'm not going to list these black and white hollows i've already done these so many times there's chinchino and it's damaged let's see i'm not doing that one oh i have too many cards i don't think there's a number that i could pay someone to be able to do this because this is just straight up not even worth selling the stuff I'd love to go to some conventions and sell these as like singles, one, two dollars each in, in, in conventions and people can sort through bulk boxes. But the problem is, it's just, it doesn't happen where I live, unfortunately. I wish, I wish there was an option. This card is sleeved, what's in there? It's the Inevi card. There's a bunch of water type here. Oh, it's all water type. Anything here? Uh, I already have these. That's pretty good. Dark Golbat, Magic Cubs. Yeah, when I put these together, I still put like popular Pokemon that I thought were good. Yeah, I think these are all from a collection I got today. I'm not going to list this Wishy Washy GX, that's for sure. That'd be a bad idea. Um. Yeah, like, do you want me to go to Japan again? Or not, do you want me to, like, should I go and show more stuff? Some guy commented today is like, I wish there was more like sightseeing and like dinner and food and stuff. And I, I wish I did more of it too, honestly. But it, my schedule was like, wake up, eat food, get to the card shop of the day, the first one, and be there like five minutes, 10 minutes before it open. You know, look up prices, look up some things online, figure out what I want to buy and what I should try and look for that day. Try to get myself with some prices and stuff like that 
and have a, a basic understanding of like what I wanted to get. And then it was just like, you go to the first store, like one o'clock, sometimes they open or two o'clock, sometimes they open. And that sounds good. But then like, you got to travel 10, 15 minutes to get to the next door. And then you got to travel 10, 15 minutes to get the next, like you're at the last store or oh, not the last store. Like it's a 20 minute ride in Tokyo. Sometimes 10 minute walk to like each store. And then it's a lot of time wasted, like a lot of genuine time wasted in between stores. So you have to know exactly what you got. And when I'm, when I'm looking for cars to buy plus filming, it took up a lot of time. Like I'll tell you right now, it was a lot of time. So yeah, I would have loved to at the end of the night, like do some nightlife footage and everything. But most of the meals we had were just like on the go. Like we're at the train station. All right, let's get a sandwich, 7-Eleven. Let's just go. Cause I already done that in Japan. I already went through everything and gone crazy, but FPS cards, we've definitely got to list those. Some cute EV cards. That one, no. Black and white hollow. That is. I have them all listed already, so if, I don't think they're selling that well. Got some old back cards here. These are supposed to be. You notice there's no old back cards here? It's because I sort I sort all the old backs just separately, just because I have a separate section for them. Because if I didn't separate old backs, I would have way too many cards in the same sort of sections, and it would make it way hard to find certain things. These are lots of non holy EVs. Why do we even have all those? All right, so. Yeah, but if, if, like, definitely, if there is something that I could have done more of or could have improved on, because, like, it's embarrassing to say this, but, like, I have a lazy eye. It's not embarrassing to say that, but I have a lazy eye, and I think it's, like, pretty obvious sometimes when there's, like, light shining in my eye. This one right here kind of wanders, and when I'm looking into the sun, it, like, kind of closes. Like, it's been a thing since I've been young. It is what it is. A lot of people have them, and it's a normal thing, but, like, I didn't realize how bad it was while I was filming. So when I turn around and I'm outside with the camera, I'm always like, like I can, I see it when I was editing. I saw it every single time. And you guys will tell me, hey, that's not that big of a deal. But like, you know, you, it's your own person, right? You're looking at your own footage and you have to listen to your own voice for fucking 20 hours. And, you know, you don't want you to be seen in that way. So that was one thing I wish I uh, probably took note of earlier on of, of my the eye thing happening because it's I, I find it personally, I'm not embarrassed by it, but I find it like embarrassing, if that makes any sense. There's so many old back hollows in here, old back cars that I haven't been in these piles for so long. Uh, there's another, that's a very damaged car. Magic Carp. It's crazy. Look at this. Uh, this is probably light played. <laughs> probably not. Okay. Let's check for some. There's a sleeved card in there. Tight fit sleeves every time. So yeah, that's one thing that I wish I would have uh, changed or got better at trying to avoid that from happening because no one's probably ever going to notice and now you guys will notice now that i said it that's going to ruin everything and people will make fun of me or whatever i don't give a shit but like lots of gyarados cards here crocodile slowpoke luminion i really don't need to upload any more of these luminions i have uh so many already <laughs> a fion manaphy yeah i have lots of those scramble gyarados is pretty good lots of delta species cards i don't have to put these up not for a while. Um, yeah, I wish I held the camera up more. I said that earlier. I wish I didn't have the eye thing. And I think I could have done a few more takes. I wish I did more footage of certain card stores. Because like the start of the day, sometimes I would go out. And you'll probably notice by the vlogs. Some videos are 25 minutes. Some videos are 35 minutes. Some videos are two hours. And that that's my fault for like not prioritizing the videos as much as maybe I should have because I was there to do it. So I probably should have taken them more seriously. Now this whipper is sleeved. Oh, it has one dot of edge wear. It's pretty lame. Um, I could have taken them the, the tiniest bit more serious in the fact that like I would leave at like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, depending on when the store opens around me. And then I would get there and the first door of the day, can't film. 
maybe second store. Oh, you can film. That's cool. So I'm like, okay, I got one film in for the day. And then the third store and the fourth store, don't film. And then I go sixth store. Okay, film a little bit. But the one, the sixth store is like not very big. And I, it would have been so much better if I was able to like balance it and get enough footage for like every day. Because like days 12 and 13, uh, yeah. Day 12 was not too bad. I think I finished up in Goya on that day. I went back to Tokyo on the 13th, but like in Tokyo, I already filmed like everything I wanted to. This is obviously So I wasn't really that interested in like, you know. Oh, like, oh, I'm back in Tokyo. Like I already filmed every store that I could have in Tokyo because I went to like pretty much within reason, I went to like all of them. So these cards are expensive. I'll just leave those in the sleeves. It's not a big deal. Okay, here's some water cards, some more here. So that's one thing I wish I'd paced the videos more, or at least like while I was there, I did more. And if I didn't have enough card content that I would have like filmed, like going out to dinner or seeing something cool. But you know, I thought to myself while I was there, like I'm here to film cards. I'm not here to film me. People are here in the video to watch cards. They're not here to watch me. And I think that's a human thing to like not think that people want to see you and they might want to just see like the thing that you're making. And I still can't believe that like people would ever want to like watch my stuff or whatever. It's, I don't think it ever goes away for anyone. That's pretty normal. Just like why I, you know, my business is not too bad, but there's people that choose to buy off me rather than other people, even at the same price as not higher. And I maybe you can't figure it out, but yeah, that's probably something I wish I did more paste myself with the stores that let me film and show them off a little bit more and highlight some stuff. But at the same time, show some more stuff if I didn't get that many stores because I could have spent 20 minutes, 30 minutes in some stores that I had three minutes of footage, four minutes of footage. I walk in, all right, this is a cool card I saw it here. Here's the card store name. This is the thing. And you know, it would have been good if I just sat there and just slowly panned over every, ca every cab cabinet. But I didn't have time for that. And I also don't personally think that's like that's that enjoyable. That's not that enjoyable content for me personally. Other people, maybe not. Like like J Love's really good at that because he does that and then does like voiceovers and he does B roll footage and all this other fancy camera work stuff that I personally don't have the time or like maybe not like the the Yeah, I guess it's just the time really like I don't feel like it's worth investing the time that much into the videos for me. I just wanted to like get proper card store footage because I know what I like. And a lot of people that watch my channel know what they like. They like pretty similar things that I like. So when, when I'm in the stores, I'm like, okay, what would people actually want to see? And then I think to myself, okay, what would I want to see? So I'm not listing any more Frost Last cards. That's not happening. Frostlass might not be a Pokemon that we can sell anymore. But that is what it is. I have so many of this one card. Um, here we go. Nilux, Fion. Is that Bear Tick? I'm not listing that. So yeah. There's so many regrets and all this. Not regrets, but so many things I wish I just worked a little bit harder. I really wish that I had a laptop with me so I could review all the footage when I got back, work on it, upload the video, and then push it live while I was there, and then, like, do that. I think a lot of people do that with their vlogs. Like, they're in Japan. They push the video live. They get feedback. They do something better the next day. They push the video live, get feedback. But I, I just didn't have that. Because I left, like, I left for Japan like five days or four days after I booked the flights. I didn't really like, I could have just gone to get any laptop, but you know, that would have been another expense and I wouldn't want to get a bad laptop. I want to get a good laptop. So I would have spent like two to $3,000 more plus the camera plus backpack. So maybe if these vlogs, you know, they do good in a certain way and I'm happy with them and I want to go back, I can bring a laptop over and I can edit some videos while I'm there. And I'm doing pretty good at editing these days. I can do it quite fast. And I can work on the, the clips and stuff and the editing and the clipping and the cutting quite fast. So I might be able to do it that way. 
if that makes any sense to some people out there. Probably not, though, but... Okay. We're getting there. Now, you guys might be asked why I'm doing this. I'm separating cards that I just don't want to list. This is a damaged black and white goal. Like, I don't want to list this, and I don't have time. I'm not going to put it in, like, the to-be-listed sort of, like, backlog. Because I... I have a few more purchases coming from Japan, but none of them are, like... Everything, it's kind of, like, condensed. Like, I have a whole bunch of E-Series cards, and that's pretty obvious. Like, it's all E-Series, so... I'm going to list all that, and it doesn't have to get mixed into all this stuff. I can do that all by itself, because it's already sorted and everything. So that's fine. And then... Oh, these cards are all really good. Except that one, and that one. Definitely not that one. Oh, Garbodor is good. I like Garbodor. So... Yeah, I'm, uh... Where's, where did my train of thought go? Uh, next time I go, I'll bring a laptop, and then while I'm there, I'll upload every day. And I think that would be way better. It depends on the internet you get, though. If you get good internet from, like, the, you know, the, the hotels and stuff, because some places just don't have very good internet, or internet at all, really, so you can't just go in blindly expecting to have... You know, some of these videos are huge. They're, like, 100 gigabytes, 50 gigabytes, 40 gigabytes, so... Like I'm big, my biggest one was like sixty something gigabytes. So I mean, it's it's a it's a lot of gigabytes to upload, but you can have it running, I guess, throughout the day, like while you're not there. But um, yeah, all these black and white hollows. Uh, that's that's rainy day. I'll upload those next life. I'll probably never have time to do these, but it is what it is. Weezing's cool though. Not you, not you, not you, not you, not you. Togetic's cool. And then I'll do a little bit more like food stuff and everything on there. Unknowns are cool. I need way more unknowns listed. They're so awesome. They don't sell super fast, but unknown is a cool thing. I want to have every unknown listed, that's for sure. Um, that one there is pretty good. Yeah, I just can't believe I did it. Because, you know, it was like five days beforehand. My friend Wes is like, I'm going to Japan in five days. I was like, cool. And I was like, I should come with. And he's like, yeah, you should. And I was like, yeah, I should, but why? He's like, you can buy cards. And I was like, okay, but I have lots of cards. And they're like, oh. And the five days before I left, it would have been around... When did I, when did I leave? I leave the seventh, seventh or something? It was like the second. I was not feeling that inspired with my... Inspired? That's not even a word. I was not feeling much inspiration from my trading card work, I guess. So, it was like, one of those things I was like, eh, why don't I just go? It might bring, you know, bring me back into Pokemon. You guys probably noticed I wasn't posting much videos, and I wasn't even honestly sorting cards that much or doing anything. And you guys left some funny video, some funny comments while I was, like, not posting. Like, I know you're just sorting cards, let us watch and everything, and I'm like... I wasn't even doing that, and I'm sorry, guys. I promise I didn't do anything without you, so. It's, yeah, it was uh, one of those things, like, if I go, it might, you know, fix me a little bit, or give me a little bit more insight. And now I have a few more mini goals and mini quests I've made for myself, and things that I want to accomplish, and it might be good. And But I don't think, like, going to Japan and making vlogs is something you can just do every three months. But maybe it is. Maybe it is. But I don't think it is. Personally, because I feel like that content might get tiring. I feel like it might be like a once in, once a year type thing. Because if you just go on three months, what's changed? Like nothing? Like no new sets are out, no new nothing's out. It's all just like normal stuff. I have so many of these damn Hooper promos. These were so cheap for the longest time. Now they're actually a little bit more expensive. They're like... I sell them for like $12 damaged or $11 damaged or played. Maybe $11 played, $8 damaged. I bought most of these at around $1 to $2 each, but now they're around 4 to $8 each. So even if I buy them these days, I can't even really sell them. So some stores are so funny. They had cards like Armored Mewtwo, Hooper, and stuff like that for like 80 yen because there's just so many of them. But then other card stores had them for like 1200 you know, 1200 1800 yen. And you know that they're damaged. These are all unknowns. Look at, look at these unknowns. 
Espeon. That is not a good Pokemon. Wait a second. Where did that... All the cards that I sorted... Where'd they go? Is this this here? Oh no, did I add them on, add them into the stack? Oh no, I trolled. I got confused. I think this is it. No, I would, I would list these. Oh no. Let me just go through this real quick. I almost just added the cards that I didn't want into the stack. That would have been disastrous. Yeah, I think this is it. Okay. Good thing I just realized. I get so caught out of out of line while I do this, to be honest. Because my mind is just everywhere and I'm just trying to I'm trying to focus on a million things. <laughs> and obviously when you get to like one hour in, one hour thirty in, it's uh it's not pretty. But I hope you guys do enjoy these. But the E series can uh collection video will be pretty good. To be honest. Well, I think it'll be good. Any cards in here I need to take out? I know this isn't the best content, but this is mainly supposed to be like a more like a one-on-one -on -one type thing, not like a showing off cards video. But I have cards in the background. Okay. Get rid of all the grass non-hollows. And then we're going to combine all the stacks. And show you guys what's going on. Maybe I'll pull the camera off and show them. Because this is something else. Oh, we got some old back cards. Gloom. So move these over here. This Snorlax. Look at this. So damaged. It's not ideal. Man. As much as I missed home while I was in Japan, I'm really missing Japan right now. Like, I'm really... It just was so nice to be over there. But, like, I think everyone would probably agree... It's much more fun to like put this down because I'm going out of frame like a little bit too much. Oh, now I have a big forehead. Oh no! Back, 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 back. Everyone would agree it's much more fun to go around buying stuff than it is to like saw through things and and do the selling. So as as good as this is, this is very necessary because you know if I can't sell a lot of the cards that I went over there with the intention to buy. Well, I probably can't go back to do it, because that would be a pretty bad and dumb business move. And those reasons of why I am, like, kind of separating a lot of these and why I am doing all this right now. Like, the main thing that I want to buy in Japan, if I do go there again, is played Pokemon cards. I, you know, checking for if stuff's gradable and everything like that, it's really hard and it's really cumbersome, and most of it's not. That's what a lot of people go there for already. So you're checking a card that a hundred people have already checked before you. But if I can go over and I can go, oh, that's a black and white hollow. I sell that for two, three dollars. And I can buy that. I know it might not seem smart or good or a good use of time or money. But like that makes me happy to be able to do that. So I want to be able to replicate that. Get some happiness going. This card is stuck in the sleeve. Oh, I see the problem. It's bent. Oh my god. Ugh. That's nasty. You guys can't see that, but that's bad. I didn't bend it just then, by the way. It was already bent. But the bend made it stick and humidity and everything no good. These cards are pretty good. That's a good... I like this card a lot. Ivy Silk, Caterpie Art Red, Shed Ninja, CP4. He looks like Golden or something. Is he using Harden? I don't even know what this is. Shelma? Is that Shelma? So, taking out a few grass cards so far. A lot of these hollow cards I probably should take out, but I don't know if I have them listed or not. Just because Kimberly does most of the listings, so. It's, um. I just can't. I just don't know, so. I'll get her to check through the stacks once more. Just to be like, okay, let's not waste our time listing XYZ. But once she gives the full go-ahead, then we do some mass condition checking. And then some mass listing. And we start, we start busting it. 
So there's a bunch of cards that you want for your binders and stuff. I guess the Kimmy cards. Let me plug myself. I don't really have any sponsors, I guess. No one wants to sponsor Little O Steve. I'll take some sponsors. I mean, I'm not really. I don't. I don't know what kind of sponsor I, I would need to be honest. What kind of sponsors would I have if I was to have sponsors? Is there any even? Is there even any like sponsors in the space of Pokemon that people like? That's like a common sponsor. I don't even know. These are all Leafeons. Why did I buy this many? I, I don't know. Scyther EX. Leafeon Gym Promo. Tangrowth. This Vermilion Hollow is nice. Look, these two are a different color. That's pretty cool. This one has like way less hollow than the other one. Oh, not really on the camera. This is pink and that one's purple. I think there's a whole bunch of them in that set that are different. And then in like every language they printed like a different color one. For some reason. Something like that. I forgot the lore on that card. Sorry. So, okay. The funniest thing is. One of my friends I met up with in Japan had like a friend. Who spoke English and she was a Japanese girl. And her name was Sorry. So like, you know, I apologize a lot when I'm walking around. Not just because I like saying sorry. Just because I'm trying to be courteous and I was in another country. So, you know, you say, like, smithsen or whatever. That's like, you know, excuse me or sorry in Japanese. But just force of habit. If I walked in front of someone, I would say, like, sorry or anything like that. Or anything. You just apologize. That's what human beings do. If they're decent people. And I would say it constantly. And I would say it. And then she would look at me. Or I would say it. And she'd go, what? And then it would be like, sorry, sorry. And it was a whole thing. So that's why I brought it up in my video a few times, I think, like, there's people here named Sorry. You gotta be careful. You can't just say the word because they'll look at you. Because that's why. It actually happened more than you can imagine. So, <laughs> pretty funny. Um, what is this? Three more hollows. Okay. Wow, that's a lot of cards. Like honestly, how do I? I don't want to take that out of shell yet. But this is. Let me move these. Thank you for joining this ride so far. The wild ride of Steve's backstock. The worst part about all of this is this isn't even everything. This isn't even everything. Oh. Some of these cards I remember buying like more than a year ago. Just because there's, there's simply just not enough time. Um, fire type. What is... Who does this? Oh, Kazuki. Kazuki did a drawing of Rusty for me. Nice, nice lady. Um, guys, I'm so overwhelmed. There's literally so many cards. I don't know what to do next. So what I would normally do next after this is I would get all the cards out and then I would start putting them alphabetically. So this, you know, Torterra, Sceptile, Victory Bell, Sunflora, everything. I would start doing it alphabetically and then I would do it again. I would pick up like all the cards that start with S and then I would put them into Sceptile cards and some floral cards, and that would match up everyone that had this artwork, everyone that had this, all the same cards. So when I'm condition checking, I'm going in behind them, I'm like, okay, played, this one's near min, that one's damaged. If the two cards are the same by itself, they'll go in the stack as played, and they'll be like on top of each other. And then when I pick up the played stack, and I go to list it, I'm like, oh, there's two Sceptile cards here, I'm going to list these together. And that saves me a lot of time. But there's a lot of like, preemptive sorting that goes into like saving time while listing as sorting is easy i would have had this done an hour ago if i wasn't recording but that's fine that's the worst thing about sorting for me at the moment is like i really want to do it while i record just so it's some of my favorite videos to put out is just me me recording me talking to myself but i like to do this all throw on a video throw on some mba or whatever throw on some music and just sort it all and then do the conditions name it play damage and then i pick up all the played cards and list them and it's super super simple i know they're all played and they're all together i don't know of a better way to do this you could sort them into set order but the only problem with doing in sets is like this is a set this is a set that's a set oh this is a set that's a set that's a set they're all different sets and you have like 20 30 40 60 sometimes up to like 100 different sets 
to go through. And then you have a hundred different piles where you have to sort them in alphabetically, condition, checking them, rather than like mega piles where you can get like a general range of conditions. And, you know, condition checking is really easy. If you get onto the back and you go, okay, all these, these nim in and all these are played and this one's played, that one's played. And usually what I do is when I'm condition checking fast as well, I'll just check the backs. And you can tell if a card's not near mint from the back really easily. There's a card that's measured down the bottom, that's played. I mean, I know all these cards are pretty much played as I put them in here. I didn't have any real near mint cards here. There's still a whole nother few rows of near mint cards because I don't want to slide them around and mess with them. But if I'm like, okay, this card was played, that card's played, that card, what is this card anyway? Oh, they're just, these cards are pretty good condition usually. But, you know, this card's played, 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 played. Oh, that one's damaged. Put the damaged one down. If this one is damaged as well, I'll put the played ones down to get them out of my hand. And then I'll go, okay, okay, damaged, damaged, damaged. Oh, that card looks near mint. Let me have a better look at that. Shine the light on it. Get the light up and down. Like, it's about that over and over again. Trying to, like, realistically trying to get as much going as possible. Not trying to, like... How can I say it? Not trying to. What am I trying to say? I guess like it, you're spending a lot more time doing the sorting, but then when you're going through, you're trying to pick up lost time here and there by doing things a little bit faster. And that's why I use played near mint and damaged or near mint played damage for my conditions as the ranges are a lot smaller, like a lot wider, actually. Sorry, a lot wider. <laughs> I can't talk at the moment. So like a near mint card is like a PSA seven to 10. So if I have a near mint card and I see it, it's, for my conditions, it's usually like eight to 10. I would estimate if I'm telling a near mint card, it's probably an eight to 10. But for, you know, for sake, PSA hat says a seven is near mint. So a near mint card can be like PSA seven to PSA 10. And then my played cards could probably be around like PSA five all the way up to PSA eight. Maybe, maybe all the way up to PSA seven. I'm not going to, you know, say I'm better than I am. But like a played card for me might be like a, Four to a seven, let's just say that. And then and then uh, a damage card for me could be like a one to a four. So there's overlap in the highest range. So maybe I sell a played card that has like, let me see if I can find one. Okay, this card, these cards are always pretty clean just because they come out of the, the sealed decks. Okay, this is actually gonna be a challenge finding a played card. When I said all the cards were played, that card's really good as well. It's Okay, so let me show this card. Get the light going. So this card looks pretty clean, right? But down the bottom here, where my fingernail is, it has a uh, little bit of a little bit of a crease, bendy type thing. Now, my experience with PSA is this card would probably get a six or a seven, and it's incredibly clean, and there's no scratches or anything. I sell this as played, but if I graded this, this honestly would probably get a seven. But I'm gonna be real right now. I'm not trying to say that it's better than it is. That would probably go to seven. At the lowest, a six. So my plate is like four to seven. But with near mint cards, maybe there might be one or two dots of edge area. I think it's going to be hard for me to find a near mint card. But maybe a damaged card. Damaged is usually when I like give it a condition check. A damaged card needs to have like the surface being altered in some way that makes the card like less eye appeal so this card here is a venusaur from dark rush now you can't really see too much wrong with this but if i bend this over it's really hard with this light to be honest there we go see how it's kind of like warped either water damage or humidity damage right there at the top it's like super bendy and folded now i can't call this plate can i because it's uh pretty damaged up there but Will this get PSA 1? Probably not. Could this get PSA 4? Maybe. So it's like one of those things where damage can be a range and so can play. It's, it's all like a big thing where like the... That's how I do it. That's why I only do damage played in near mint. It saves me lots of time because the price difference on like a card like Sceptile Hollow. Look this up. The price difference on this card here. This is like in play condition, I'd probably list this 299. And this might take a while to sell and a really, really diehard Sceptile fan. And a near mint one might be like five, six dollars. And a damaged one's like a dollar ninety nine, maybe. Something like that. Just I don't like to list cards too too much lower than a dollar ninety nine, because it's not really worth it if you do do it any lower than that. 
So it does a light played version of this. So a little bit worse than Nimmin. Do I list that for four? Maybe like a plate is three and a damage is two. So light plate is four and near mint's five. And if I list it as mint instead of near mint, can I get seven or eight? It's a lot of effort when it comes to listing and price research. Whereas I have so many cards. If I go, okay, this one's played, all the play ones I have are like, I'll just put them all up for three dollars. Now it's a little bit different when I get into cards that are like really expensive. If I have a uh, if I can find an example. Of course I can't find an example when it's uh it's maybe like this card here. What is it? Charizard, Advent of Oh DP, sorry. Is that Advent of Arceus? No, I don't think so. I forgot what set it is. So this card wait, what's wrong with this card? Oh yeah, down the bottom here. So it's got this little dent down the bottom here. Oh, it's a bit of edge where I guess it looks like a dent there. There you go. And then a bit of edge around the bottom left. I would consider this played. I would not list this as near mint. It does have a little scratch at the front there. Right there, you can see the scratches. So I'll put this as played, but it's pretty close to near mint. A lot of people call this light played, but I just don't have time. And I have so many of them. That I'm not going to put this as like light played just so I can squeeze a little bit more. But if I have this played and then I have another one that's like obviously way worse, but not damaged, I might put like a 5 to $10 difference between them. So you can still do it on the more expensive card, whatever this is, like $25, $20, maybe a damaged version is like 9 9 10 and then a played version is like 15 This was like in the range of like near mint to played, very, very fine line between the two. I'm rambling, but like I'm trying to help you understand why I do it this way and why I only use three conditions. On eBay, they have four conditions or five conditions. I just use three. And if I know that one played card is slightly better than the other one while I'm listing it, I just adjust the price myself, but I keep it all played to be uniform. So, I, I mean, I hope that makes sense. I'm rambling towards the end of this because I'm, I'm going a bit crazy doing this video for however long I'm doing it. But I had fun uh, sorting all these cards together, to be honest. And I'll probably leave these on my desk and I'll start sorting them into alphabet and we can talk about something else next time. So I'm going to put this video up tonight, I guess. So this would be a fresh video. Let me know how you like it. And we'll start sorting the cards afterwards. And maybe do some condition checking as well. If you want some condition checking, let me know. I'm more than happy to do that. So my name's Steve. I uh, hope you have a great day. Sorry about the constant rambling and the cutting and everything in the video and dog barking. But that's perfectly fine. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, organize it, and get it ready for the next, the next version. I don't know. Probably don't need to buy any more cards anymore. Oh, actually, this is going to be hard. I need to show you guys the cards. Ooh, but this camera isn't really set up to come out of its cage. Um, okay. Can I make this full screen? I think I can. If I do this. Okay. Can you guys see this? Oh, this is actually so hard to do. I'm using my uh, other camera. Do you guys see this? This is the, this is me over here. Hello. And this is the normal type stack. And this is the psychic type stack. Like, it is, isn't this just wild? And then over here, oh, you guys can see how dirty my office is. That's well, not really that dirty, actually. These some other cards, like some steel cards. And this is all like the, the, the grass cards. There's so many. Look how much there is. This is crazy. So, hey, I'm down here. Hello. So, oh, hello, Light. Um, I'm going to turn this off now. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> this webcam is really nice. Look at my plush at the back. How am I, how's my beard going? It grows so fast, this beard. So I'm, I'm sweaty. It's hot. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another vlog. And I'm uploading this video tonight. So thank you so much. Have a great day.